one point he had to go up into a plane and he was flying over um, parts of Europe that had been damaged by the war effort and the pilot, the co-pilot says to him, and this is the title of the message, so how's the view, Winston? And that's what I'd like to talk about today. I've been reading a book, a biography on, on Churchill, and that's where it comes from for me. The history's coming back for me. How's the view? And we're going to look at it today from our own personal lives, in our own personal lives, as we go up and assess the life, not just the damage of our life, but the war-torn results of the Christian walk that you and I engage in every single day. And the different, some of the specific areas that... Um, we might be able to look back at, look down from an aerial view, get a little bit better perspective with hopefully the Holy Spirit as our co-pilot teaching us as we go along what some of these areas are that we need to uh, assess and deal with as the Lord has given these things to us to steward in our life. What are we seeing? With the Holy Spirit as my guide, help me to understand Holy Spirit. What is it that I'm seeing? in this aspect of my life, and what can I do to address it? Good or bad? Some obvious ones. Our family, our spouse, our children, our extended What kind of things do you pour into your mind? What books do you read? What do you look at on the internet? What magazines do you read? Newspaper? Where do you watch your news? Any of those things, and those are just kind of cursory things. But how are we feeding our mind? Are we suffocating it with the fast food of the world, or are we starving it from the healthy food that we need? Okay, and of course we're talking about spiritual things. The way that we think is a major area of concern for us in terms of responsibility to that gift that God has given us, our brain. How about our talents, our skill sets, our aptitudes? And don't take this too far, we all have them. Uh, but character is obviously something I consider more important than how well we're able to do certain things. But God has given us talents to use in a certain way. We think the American way of life is the Christian way of life. And in many aspects it is. In many aspects it is not. Our upbringing and our heritage. <coughs> significant. What do you do with the upbringing and heritage that God has given you? Kind of interesting. To see Tim Archer's printout of from this time to this time, Tim Archer did this. From this time to this time, he was doing this. And I probably would be a little surprised in a negative sense at how I spent my time. Simple time allocation. Uh, gender. How about your gender? Male, female. I, this, I'm not going to talk on this one as much. But we have, he has made us male and female. We have distinctive roles as believers, as his creation in that. And to what extent are we walking that out, fulfilling that? And I'm not going to say anything specific about it. Okay, let's go back. Those are just some of the things, different areas, land areas, if you will, as we're flying over our life in an aerial view of the battlefield down below, which is our life. What are some things that we can do to address this? I'm going to start with this, what I call a circular process. Uh, the first thing we need to do is, is assessment. Let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts of this situation in this particular area of my life. And Tom has talked about this when he, he uses the phrase, check the scoreboard. Tim has talked about it using the phrase, I think, looking at the uh, gauges on the instrument panel, on the, on the dashboard, in your car. Is everything look, does everything look okay? It's assessment, looking at the facts. Secondly, as we look at the facts, establish a clear vision. We need to dream, but not at the expense of today. If you can follow me. I'm, I'm guilty of dreaming so much that I ignore the realities of this moment, and I've lost it. I've lost this day, I've lost this particular season of my life because I'm looking so far ahead that I miss the moment that I have. And I don't know if I'll have another moment. I don't know if I'll have the next season. Yeah. I do know I have right now. I have this time in front of you. I have this day. And so we need to attack the day, the realities of the moment, with the dream as the background for us that drives us into this particular God day. doesn't call us to just extraordinary things. He calls us also 
to do ordinary things extraordinarily. Thirdly, act with persistence. Tim talked about persistence as a principle, as life lessons. Persistent in what God has called us to. Go after it. Go after it. Act with persistence. Nehemiah 4 says, yes, the wall's a mess. There's the assessment. God's word, he wants the wall built. You can do it. Now let's act. Let's have a mind to work and see it happen. Whether it's something corporately as a church, as a family or individual family, or in your own life. Keep going back over it. And here we are again. Bit by bit, block by block, we build the wall. It doesn't happen overnight. We like the quick fixes. We like that. And that's not so much just a culture. I think we just expect God to do it that way. And that is just not Him most of the time. He tends to work in a process, in time, even generationally, where we don't even see the answer fulfilled. One, use what you have. Secondly, don't hold on to anything too tight. Don't hold on to anything too tightly. The dreams, the visions, the things that God has given you, even the good things, don't grasp them so tight that you squish the life right out. Be willing to give back the dream if God wants. We have short-term and long-term goals. Winston Churchill talked a lot about this in the book, where we have a lot of battles in life. And we win some and we lose some. But there's a difference between winning and losing when it comes to a battle versus the war. We win the war if we approach the battle with the right mindset. You may think you're losing the battle, but that doesn't mean it's over. Now think about this. This isn't just something in his life that's not going well. This is the known world coming under the oppression of the Nazis. And he feels the responsibility as the one leader, the man in charge of holding it back and beating it and defeating it. He's the main cheerleader. And yet he sees the reality of what's going on. But think about what was going on in Winston Churchill's mind. I'm losing. I'm losing. Do we feel that way sometimes? I'm losing. It's not working. It's not happening. We can lose the battle sometimes, but still know when we act with persistence that the war is lost. And so it's just getting ourselves on the right side. We're with the allies, not the axes. It's the last point, last principle. This was, and I obviously didn't hear, it was 20 years before my time. I think it was in October of 1941. Churchill is speaking in a place called Harrow. It's, it's a tough time. And it was a famous speech, apparently. And he says, never give in. Now think about this. This is on the radio, right? People are clinging to their radios. The world's at stake here. I, mean, I don't know how to emphasize that enough. The world is at stake. Never give in. As he's thinking about the depression he's going through, at the same time, he's saying, never give in, never give in, never give in, never give in, except to honor and good sense. He repeated that four times, never give in. Don't quit. Never quit. You are on the winning team. Never give in. And I love it, except to honor and good sense.